John French and it is March already 2016 we've been real busy putting stuff together for this motorhome so enjoy the show well the fan belts just came two out of three were right size one of them was not so I will take that as my mistake somewhere but two might work give it a try and to continue wiring in the three phase system we have three phases here brown orange yellow which go on to this conduit and this conduit here travels on through to this junction box inside the junction box i've put a big contactor and what makes the contactor work is this coil down here and that is connected to 120 volts it, you know it comes up to 120 volts which goes into this mc cable which will go to the front of the vehicle so on this side of the contactor we have the three wires coming from the alternator on that side of the contactor we have three wires going from the contactor to the disconnect so when i put 120 volts into this coil it will close the contactor and allow the electricity to flow on up into the disconnect what i'm thinking is you want to get this thing up to voltage before i kick in the contactor so i don't know if that's a good idea just you know slowly sending voltage up and through into the variable frequency drive so we're going to make sure we've got the full voltage happening here before i close the contactor also in the contactor i've got three phases coming down this blue conduit here into a fuse box there are three one amp fuses rated at 600 volts and these fuses are in line to the ground fault detector and as you can see the mc cable is snaking along through the chassis and is supported by uh, mc straps and the mc cable ends up just in front of the driver's seat through the firewall here and it's going to go to a switch then on to an inverter which will give us 120 volts to turn the contactor on and off and coming in from the front of the vehicle i've cut a couple of holes in the floor for batteries we should get four batteries in these two holes all right, so now we have the first pair of batteries in the floor. They're sitting in a plastic dish. So it'll stop any drafts coming through the floor. And then put another two there and we've got four more. And here I cut out the metal just above where the gas tank used to be. So that's going straight to the ground. And you can see the ground there. And the great thing about this is when the, the batteries are going to go in here but when they run flat you just take the batteries out and you put your legs down there and run as you can see in the hole where the fuel tank was originally i've put some pieces of kind off or unistrut down with brackets screw bolted them onto the chassis and now i'm going to put in some kind of plastic container to hold the batteries now we've got two for six batteries in the floor we need two more and then I'll start tying them together I cut the top off the gas tank put uh, brackets underneath to support it and then we can put batteries in here as you can see I don't have five batteries right now but I will soon this is a diagram of the motor control circuit that I'm using to run the 48 volt DC motor here. Here's the batteries, the contactor, the motor controller, and finally, of course, the electric motor. It starts off with the power supply of four 12 volt batteries. So with all of these batteries in series, you come out of one end, the positive terminal, to a dual switch, which I'll go into detail later on and then from that switch we go on to the 300 amp fuse 
then from 300 amp fuse we go to the contactor when that contactor closes the electricity you can just go straight across here up there and into the motor controller 500 amp it goes to the positive terminal on the motor controller what we have here I would say a 12 gauge wire going up to a 4 amp fuse and then on to a resistor going back out to a 4 amp fuse and then going to the other side of the contactor what this does here, this little circuit here when this contactor opens you normally get sparks and that will burn out your contacts on the contactor so this will help alleviate the sparks when the circuit is turned off to operate this coil here on the contactor we need 48 volts this wire here is 1 ohm copper THHN that is some pretty heavy stuff I think it's good for like 175 amps or something continuous so we go from this terminal here down to terminal A1 on the 48 volt DC motor terminal A2 and S2 are jumbled together because this is wired in series when you do that and from terminal S1 we go to terminal M on the 500 amp motor controller on the other big terminal is a negative sign and that one goes with one odd wire goes all the way back to to the negative terminal on the battery so that's the positive terminal that's the negative if you take your voltmeter and measure that that should be that it's supposed to be 48 volts but it will actually be about 54 volts charged now the last part of this circuit is these two wires here these two wires are connected to a potentiometer that potentiometer is about 5k and maybe 5 watts power when you adjust the resistance on this potentiometer adjust it to zero resistance that will send a signal to the M terminal which will make the motor run really fast so the more you increase the resistance there all the way to 5k by the time you get probably three quarters of the way say to 4k the motor would have stopped so as you lower the resistance the faster this motor will turn and this motor is connected to the alternator so that will create the AC voltage and the final bit is this wire here which goes from there to the positive wire coming from the battery by the contactor of course this is a diagram of the dual battery switch this allows us to change between two power sources to energize the 500 amp motor controller each bank of batteries are connected in series so the potential difference or the voltage between that terminal positive terminal there and that negative terminal is of course 48 volts and the way to connect these in series is you connect the negative of one battery to the positive of another battery and then you go negative to positive negative to positive and then you end up with a negative there the way this switch works is it has two positions one two and I think there might be an off position too but I'm just going to show you this for the purpose of the diagram so when you flip the switch here it allows the electricity to flow in this direction across the 300 amp fuse past the contactor and on to the 500 amp motor controller and then the negative 
would go from this battery here across to the negative low terminal on the 500 amp motor controller. Now when these batteries run down you just flip that switch and then you've got a fresh set of batteries to draw power from. So they both take their power from the positive terminal here which goes up flip that switch and that will continue on past the 300 amp fuse and the contactor and on into the motor controller and the negative from here is also connected to the negative of this one and that will go to the negative terminal of the motor controller this switch here is actually located there and the next part is this motor controller here that I got from a forklift now most of this stuff we will not need then after a short while all the components are removed from this large heatsink board and all we got to do now is give it a good cleaning and start putting stuff on that we need to make the motor run right so I got this motor controller stripped down and what we are down to are the essential parts which are this fuse here the positive from the battery goes to this fuse which continues on along this bus bar that bus bar goes to one side of a contactor the other side of the contactor is here and that has a positive which is a red this red goes on to the plus side of the motor controller the negative side of the motor controller comes back down here and is just joined onto this post here now what else we've got is this resistor which is protected by these two 4 amp fuses and this goes down between the positive bus here and the other positive side of the contactor so when the power is turned on the electricity goes straight through that resistor and then that stops this contactor from sparking a lot when it breaks this is one out gauge wire by the way copper which will handle the voltage and we're going to take a this is the negative cable this will go on to negative to the battery and on the back here there's a terminal here and this one goes to the other side of the DC motor we've got this top terminal here which connects onto the positive and then when we get this set on the motor home we've got these two wires to attach to a potentiometer so we've got that made and at the moment I'm just building a, a can to put this in a box a metal box um, so if sparks start flying at least it's going to be contained and that'll just be a, a safety issue you know I've put this panel together here and that is where the DC motor controller will nestle it's held in place by four studs in each one in each corner here and there's a gap all the way around and that's deliberate so we can get good airflow around the apparatus so if there's any kind of explosion or whatever this lid will take most of the brunt so it's just a safety thing to have that lid on and the DC motor controller was going to go right behind the driver's seat area on this wall but it's pretty heavy so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this panel cover and I've drilled it with corresponding holes in the back and this will go on the outside of the motorhome I just got a painted green so it matches 
and here is that panel cover and that is on the back side of the wall to the big electrical box that I just installed it has four bolts either side to hold it in and of course it put some corking on to stop rust happening so uh, I think in a couple of months time this colour should merge into the other colour because they're both 100 grain but they're two different shades oh yes fits like a glove well thanks for watching that episode number 20-B is coming right along